Well, hey everybody, it's uh, it's Friday, so it's uh, it's time for Flashcard Friday, and uh, I, I got to tell you, as as I was thinking about what to do with this week, I couldn't get past Pastor Chad's message on uh, on Sunday, and how the whole time I'm 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 sitting there and, I, and I'm listening to him, you know, and he's talking about three different characters in one story, and uh, and I could find myself in each one of those characters. And it, it was it was in the conviction of his message that I realized again, uh, that in, in this book that, that we call um, the love story be, between God and us, we're supposed to see ourselves in everything. Everything that's written in here, we're supposed to see ourselves. We're supposed to see that relationship. So um, I, I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit today. And I wanted to use a couple of parables, uh, you know, and they're parables that, that we're all really familiar with. Uh, you know, and, and again, you know, Jesus, anytime he taught that the majority of what he used, uh, you know, were, were these different, you know, stories where, where there would be different characters and different people you know, and, and all, you know, all different kinds of things like that. And, and I chose one where it's, it's pretty easy to see ourselves in most of the characters. And then another one where there might be some spots that we don't, that we wouldn't stop um, to actually think that, that we could be found in, in that particular thing as well. So if we start with the Good Samaritan, and I'm using the one found in Luke, um, chapter 10, verses 30 through 36. Uh, in that, we have, you know, Jesus has been asked, and there, there's actually, there, there's one more uh, person that we could add to this. We could add the lawyer, you know, to it, to it as well. Because how many times have we questioned the character of Jesus or questioned who he is? Uh, but if we just look at the parable itself, we find a bunch of different people in here. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going along the same road. When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and he bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you may have. And I actually missed a couple of them when, when I wrote this. Um, but let's talk about the injured man. I think all of us have been hurt at some point in time in our lives. And, and we've, we've cried out for help only to have people look the other way. So that one, you know, that one, that one's pretty standard. The Good Samaritan, you know, we, we all strive to be that, you know, that particular character. We want to be the one that reaches out. But I want you to notice um, the word Samaritan. A Samaritan in, in this context is a half-breed. This person is half Syrian and half Israelite. So they were considered nobodies. If you remember Jesus and the woman at the well, uh, his disciples were shocked that he was talking to a Samaritan woman because they're not, they're not supposed to talk to each other. So I think it's apropos that Jesus used Samaritan in there uh, because this is somebody that nobody would give the time of day. Then you have the priest. The priest crosses the street. And so does the Levite, you know, and we're sitting there going, well, I'm not that guy. I'm not, I'm not that one. I, I would never do that. If I saw somebody hurting, I'd, I'd want to help them. You know, and, and I mean, I can use some, you know, some like big scenarios, uh, you know, just one that we've seen 
uh, most recently in, in video, George Floyd, people videotaped that man as he was dying. Now they videotaped him out of fear of what the police would do to them, but it's kind of similar. The priest and the Levite were afraid of the robber. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying anybody was right or anybody was wrong, but when I stop and I look at it from that perspective, uh, several years ago when police in Dallas were under fire, uh, you know, they, there, there was a gunman, you know, who, who was shooting at police officers. Uh, people were running the other way. They were, they were getting out of the way, again, out of fear. But they crossed the street. You know, and, and you can even, you can think about times when, and I'll just, I'll, I'll pick on myself. When uh, I look down and I see the caller ID, I see who that is. And I know if I answer it, it's a, it's a 45 minute phone call. And I don't really have time. So I choose to not answer it. In that instance, I could very easily be the priest or the Levite. And one thing to denote, uh, the differential between a priest and a Levite, because I know a lot of people think that, that they're very similar characters. Um, a priest in this day and age would have been a very high standing uh, you know, in, in the town, they were, they were the guys who they got the college degree. Not only, you know, not only did they have the bloodline, but they got the degree to go with it. Uh, and the Levi, the Levite was more, um, they were more of a prophet. So they didn't necessarily get all the schooling, uh, you know, that the priest did. So they were, they were almost more of a helper to the priest. And then a lot of times we can see ourselves as the innkeeper. You know, the innkeeper, you know, we, we want to have that opportunity to, to help somebody out. Uh, one of Pastor Chad's biggest uh, passions is the Severe Weather Center. That's the innkeeper. But now how many of us are, are, are even going to consider turning off this video when I ask you to see yourself as the robber? I know, I know that that's hard. That's hard for me. You know, I don't, I don't ever want to see myself as, as causing injury to somebody else intentional or not, but we do it. You know, sometimes we can mean well, you know, we can want to help somebody out, but in doing so we can say the wrong thing and we can wind up hurting them. Um, you, you know, again, uh, just kind of a, a quick story from, from my, uh, my own personal journey. I, as, as a pastor, I get, I get to help people. Um, and, and it, it's, it's, it's pure joy when I get, when I get to do these types, um, you know, these types of things, when I get to reach out to hurting people. Uh, but I had somebody who, they, they were struggling with a couple of passages in the Bible. And instead of listening to what they said, I pointed to the Bible and I almost beat them over the head with it. You know, uh, uh, they, were, they were very attracted to somebody and they didn't think it was wrong to be sexually active prior to marriage. And I was new enough in my faith that I held firm to the Hebrew scripture and, and I like, and I just beat him over the head with it. I said, you're wrong. You know, it was just continually, I, I said they were wrong. They wind up, they wound up walking away from the church because of what I was saying, you know, because I couldn't teach them the love of Christ. I had to teach them the discipline. And in that instance, I became the robber. How about you? So there's 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 one, and, and again that that's and, and actually there, there are two other there are two other characters. Let's talk about the lawyer. We talked about it, you know, a little bit, okay? But we we have the lawyer. I questioned Jesus last night. I, you know, I, I was on my mower and, and 
and I'm working and it's nice out and I see all the people on the lake and and I question God why do they get to do that when I'm stuck on a lawnmower working now God explained to me that I was exactly where I needed to be but I played the lawyer in that point and another one that, that, that I missed the first time I looked at this the mule the mule or the donkey Sometimes we can't be the good Samaritan. You know, sometimes that's not what we're, what we're supposed to do. Sometimes we're supposed to be the bridge between the Samaritan and the innkeeper. We're supposed to be the transportation. So again, you know, if you take, um, take Pastor Chad's uh, Severe Weather Center, sometimes people need to be taken to a job interview. And Pastor Chad will find people, uh, you know, who are willing to do that. They're the mule. So how many of you can see yourselves in each one of these characters? Because that's what the Bible intends us to do. Now let's go to one a little bit, uh, a little bit more difficult. And just, just to honor you guys this time, I'm not going to read um, the full scripture. It's the, it's the sower of the seeds. Um, actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm, I'm going to read it. If we go a little long, I apologize. Um, but I just, I, I just, I love the way it's written in here. Um, again, you know, Jesus is speaking here and he says, a farmer went out to sow seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. When the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked out the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Now, I think we've all seen ourselves as the seed. We, we know that, that we're the seed in that story, uh, you know, and, and we, need to, we need to make sure that we fall on good soil. You know, that, that, one's, that one's pretty, that one's pretty, pretty standard. How many of you have been on the path? and been chewed up by a bird. How many of you have been the bird? You know, again, well-meaning, you know, you know that the bird is doing what it takes to survive, uh, but that seed didn't stand a chance against it. And even, you know, the path, it's, it, it's there. It's, you know, you're at your job, you're supposed to be at your job but in doing that something gets hurt uh, like like mo um, most people know that that during during the shutdown you know when uh, when everybody was watching online I was working in the tech booth I was putting the lyrics on the screen and, and doing all of that and I was doing that, you know, I, I was doing that so that volunteers didn't have to come in and, uh, and potentially expose themselves, uh, you know, be, before the governor had said it was okay. But one of the things that, that I said to Crystal when she went to schedule after that is, I don't want anybody thinking I'm taking that position um, because we have some phenomenal volunteers and I don't want them to think that I'm that I'm creeping in on their territory. I I didn't want to be the path. How about the thorns? Again, a thorn is doing what a thorn is supposed to do. But in growing up, it choked out the seed. How many times have you 
beat somebody over the head with a Bible. You, again, you meant well, but they were injured as a result of you being a thorn. Good soil. Good soil. I love, I love it when I get to be good soil, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I love it when, when I get to, to teach somebody something and it sticks, uh, you know, so, so this, I always, I always want to be seen as, as good soil. What about shallow soil? How many times ha have we talked about just reading that, that top layer of scripture and not, not being interested in going a little bit deeper? What happens when we're challenged is we back away from what we believe because we're shallow soil. And this one, this one hurts. This one hurts. What if we're the sun? What if we're the one that comes along and burns somebody just because they're on shallow soil? What if, what if you, as a, as a 30 year Christ follower, comes up against a brand new believer who's still who's still trying to figure out where their where their roots are how easily could you turn them away and make them wither again not meaning not meaning to and what about the farmer you know pastor pastor Chad has talked about the table and inviting people to the table that's the farmer are we willing to be the farmer or are we just okay being the good soil? The choice is ours. This Bible is full of this. And just because we see ourselves as a robber or a son or a thorn doesn't mean that, that we're a bad person. It just means that we have an area of our life that we have to repent and become better. We're all on that journey. I, I told you mine, some of mine literally happened yesterday. Um, it doesn't make me a bad person. It makes me human. Uh, it makes me flawed. But my goal for me is to continually seek after Christ. Is that your goal? If not, it should be. I love you guys. I hope you have a phenomenal weekend. And I look forward to see you on, seeing you on Sunday, whether it's in person or online. Can't wait to see you then. We'll talk to you later. Bye.